Welcome to Divine Downloads. I'm your host, Cassandra Bodzak, and I am so, so, so excited um, to introduce you guys today to Medium Tim Braun. Um, I found him very divinely. I really felt like I was guided to you, Tim. I know you don't know me at all, um, but I felt like I was so guided to you about a year ago. Um, randomly on Instagram. I don't remember looking up anything like specific. I know I was in general trying to find more spiritual activities here in Orange County. Somehow stumbled upon you, felt like a connection, just like liked how um, for any of you guys, I'll put the link to Tim's Instagram below. Um, he's done thousands of readings. Um, and But what I really loved about you is that on your Instagram, you have these beautiful little digestible videos where he just answers like literally the questions that I feel like are in a lot of our heads <laughs> um, about the spirit world and what's going on and the way you say it is just just so light and loving and and helpful I, I guess that's the way so I was really called um, and then as you guys know that are listening um, when uh, my grandma passed in January I've been doing more of a deep dive into all things with mediumship and near-death experiences and trying to learn more about connecting with the spirit world and connecting with the spirit world um, and doing all that. And so I was seeing Tim stuff pop up again and I was like, how funny that I was kind of guided, I was connected with him <laughs> in my own way before all this happens. And now it took on a whole different level. Um, and so I just felt really called to have you on the podcast and I'm so excited to pick your brain and ask you some questions and hear about your journey. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, pick away. <laughs> <laughs> so first let's let's start off. How did you how did you awaken to your mediumship get mediumship mm -hmm. gifts? Sure. Um, yeah. How did that so, come up for you? Yeah. So for me when I was about six years of age, um, I started really seeing, feeling and hearing spirits, but I couldn't make any sense out of it. I didn't know what it meant. Um, and at that same time, my brother, who was and still is 18 years older than myself, was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia, and he was living at home. So he was hearing voices. I was hearing voices. The voices that he was hearing were not the voices I was hearing. So I thought I was really losing my mind. Um, fast forward, you know, um, every time that I saw spirit, or I heard spirit in my in my grade school years, in my high school years, every time that I saw, saw spirit, I would just look the other way. I was just trying to avoid it and trying to tune it out. Um, and it wasn't until I was about 23 years of age, um, I was um, in my dorm room at USC in Los Angeles. And at that time, I had a very visual dream. Um, it was more like a, a vision um, of going to India and working with, with Mother Teresa. And now that was in, I had the dream in 1994, um, and it was like in September of 1994 when I was in college, and um, in that dream, which is pretty amazing, um, I was in my dorm room, and I woke up about like 5.30, 6 in the morning, because in my dream slash vision, Mother Teresa came in, um, and she basically came in with four other missionaries standing behind her, and I was walking off of this jumbo jet down these steps walking across the the airport like on the actual airport where the planes take off and she was there greeting me with these four missionaries well making a very long story short because this is in my book life and death but making a very very long story short um three months later i found myself in calcutta um working with mother Teresa when she was still alive um, for a week and a half and um, when I got off the plane, um, the plane at that time, or at least in that country at that time, they didn't have any terminals. So you had to have the jet parked off on the runway and you had to run a walk across the, the, the plane, the, uh, the, the jetway. Um, and, um, and at that time, um, the missionaries, there was four missionaries greeting me there. And then the next morning I met Mother Teresa and I, from there I worked with her for a week and a half. So that vision that I had was basically dissected up in threes, but it all came together within 48 hours. Wow. So when I came back from India, um, you know, I started um, allowing myself to be open um, to mediumship because 
I really honestly did the research on schizophrenia because I was really, really afraid that I was going to get that. And, you know, the chances of getting it past 21, 22 years of age is very, 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 very slim. So I was already 23. I'm like, okay, good. I'm already two years past it. Um, I'm, I'm good. I'm good to go. And then every time I would see spirits to the left or the right, I would just basically um, um, pay attention to it. And then fast forward to where we are today. Um, I have done over 16,000 one-on-one sittings um, these last 23 years um, and, and also doing this work in eight countries. Um, I have my book, Life and Death, which is um, currently being published in six countries right now. Um, and before the pandemic, I, um, I was doing lots of traveling, obviously, with doing different book tours and different shows throughout Europe. Um, you know, before the pandemic, the two years prior before the pandemic, I was in eight countries. Um, so everything just stopped like a, like a screeching halt for me. Um, but yeah, people often wonder, they say, you know, how do you know that you've done over 16,000 sittings? And I said, well, ever since I started 23 years ago, you know, I've been doing six sittings a day, four days a week. And last year, yeah. I, I, I gave myself a, a break. I felt like I kind of went into a little bit like early retirement, where instead of doing six sittings a day, I'm doing five. And it really changed my energy. It gave, it gave me a lot more energy because I was excited to leave an hour early because for you know, 22 years, I was leaving at 6.30. Now I'm leaving at 5.30. So I feel like a kid that's you know ditching school every single time I go to work and I love it. Um, and now I'm doing five settings a day and um, I'm usually booked up about four to six weeks in advance. Um, but I don't do more than- doing that. magical work. It's still work, even if it's magical. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you still exactly. appreciate it's, early Friday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. And, um, you know, I have clients that call in from all around the world. And, you know, I just tell um, people and friends and also clients, you know, death does not discriminate. It affects us all. You know, whether you're rich or poor or whether you're from one ethnicity or one sexuality or one religion or one country, it doesn't matter. You know, it's, it's, it's an experience that we're here. So I always like to say that death does not you know, discriminate. It really affects us all. Um, and I treat everybody the same when they come in. Um, I really kind of have like the Nordstrom's mentality. It's like, I wanna make sure everybody's happy. I get them situated. I you know, bring them in. I said, would you like to use the restroom? No, thank you. <laughs> Sometimes they say yes. I'm like, okay, it's right there. They sit down, I said, there's some water right there. We're gonna start. Um, and um, I really enjoy the work that I, that I do, but I treat everybody the same. You know, I have uh, quite a few um, celebrities that come in from Los Angeles because that's where my office used to be. And they still come in. Um, but then again, I have people that can barely afford to see me and they save up to come see me for the session. And I treat them just the same as I t treat the celebrity. I don't treat anybody any differently. Well, I think that's one of the beautiful things I've also realized in my grief journey is that, you know, when you have a profound loss, you feel so much more connected to anyone else that's going through a loss as well. Mm -hmm. And it really doesn't matter. Like all of a sudden people that maybe you had, you know, struggles with or disagreements with or saw different different things differently when you have that kind of common ground of like, wow, I know what my grief feels like. So I don't know exactly how your grief feels like, but I can resonate on a deep level of what we're both going through. That's just such a basic part of the human experience. Sure, sure. You know, I've seen multiple times throughout the years where, you know, a, a wife or a husband or brother or sister um, will come in and have the session and they go home and they're all excited and, and they're all happy about it and they tell their brother or their sister or their mom or dad um, about the sitting and I've seen this multiple multiple times where you know the client will come back for a second sitting maybe two or three months down the road and she'll say or he'll say you know I try to tell my dad to come in or my mom but he just thinks this is a bunch of crap and I'm like that's cool that's fine and then fast forward like five years or sometimes it's been even 10 years later that father Father who you know she has to come through you know his mother finally passed and he's devastated and then he's starting to search and then that father actually comes in to add the sitting so you know you're ready to sit with a medium when you're ready you know um, not everybody needs to go to a medium everybody deals with grief in their own way you know um, going to a qualified um, bereavement group having a qualified therapist having a qualified medium um, but one is not better 
better than the other. It's whatever helps you with the grief process. And what have you been, uh, well, actually, before, before I get to this question, I do want to ask you a little bit more about your journey. So at what point did you, after you had this experience with Mother Teresa, was there like a defining moment where you're like, because because the moment, and correct me if, you're, if I'm wrong here, but the moment, the vision that you had with Mother Teresa was a little bit more of like a psychic premonition mm-hmm. than it would be really mediumship, right? Even yeah, it's, it, exactly. Similar. And I call it more of a vision, um, um, you know, uh, a, a predestiny vision. Um, and people have them. Um, um, we A lot of people have them. Um, we just, just don't pay attention to them. We just don't follow them. We don't follow those dreams. And and I did. And, um, yeah. you know, when, when that energy you know, actually left the room. It was kind of like a, like a swoop of, of white light, but kind of like pearl color, like, and it just swooped away. And I'm like, okay, that's really, um, that's really interesting. And, you know, I'm a very skeptical person. So I'm like, okay, I wasn't doing any drinking last night. I haven't been doing any drinking for the last five days. So I know I'm sober, you know, I got a great night's sleep. Um, so this is, has to be something that I'm, that I'm feeling. Um, and how that all, and how that all ended is, um, or, or actually started and ended, um, is when that energy left at that time, I called information, um, back then we called 411 and the operator comes on and says, how can I help you? I'm like, yes, I need a Catholic church in Los Angeles. Cause I was going to USC downtown Los Angeles. Well, we have St. Viviana's Catholic cathedral. Would you like that one? Which that cathedral no longer exists. And I said, sure. So I took the number down and called the church and um, this woman, this secretary answered the phone. I says, I want some information about Mother Teresa because I didn't want to tell her I had a dream. She's going to think I'm a nut job. So um, I just says, can you give me some information about Mother Teresa? And she goes, well, we have the brothers of Mother Teresa and the sisters of Mother Teresa. Which number would you like? And of course I had no idea, you know, which one to pick. So I just figured, you know, um, female, you know, Mother Teresa, I'll take the woman, the female. Yeah. So I said, I'll, take the, I'll take the female, I'll take the, 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 the sisters of Mother Teresa. And as I started to say that, I will take the sisters of Mother, I stopped and I'm like, because I heard the voice and I heard that voice when I was six years of age from spirit says, no, don't ask for the sisters, ask for the brothers. And then I basically said, no, 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 um, I'll take the brothers instead. And she, you can tell she's a little frustrated, like, <laughs> mind, which one do you want? I'm like, no, no, I'll, I'll take the brothers. And so I called up that number um immediately and um this man answered the phone and and i and i says he goes how can i help you and i said well um you know i just want some information about mother Teresa." and he goes well um there's a man that came in from india last night um um maybe you are interested in talking to him and i said sure i i would love to he says well where are you located and i says well i'm downtown los angeles by usc and he goes well we're just four blocks up the street so again <laughs> conclusion drove up my 1991 little Acura, parked in this neighborhood that seemed kind of unsafe. Um, I was the only Caucasian, you know, walking in that neighborhood, walked up to this home and this Caucasian man said, you must be Tim. And I said, yes, I, I just spoke to you. And he goes, yes, this is Brother Yeshadas. And this is the conclusion of the story. Um, Brother Yeshadas is the head of the male missionaries worldwide. Mother Teresa is the head of the female missionaries worldwide. So I was basically with the head on show. And uh, long story short, three months later, um, you know, I got his information, I got the flight, and I went there. And that's how it started. So um, that's journey. What what is, you know, I think, like you were saying, like, people get this, but the difference between you and some other people that might have gotten different hits or visions, right, is that action. Right. The fact that you actually Mm -hmm. like picked up the phone, you're like, okay, I don't even know where to begin. I mean, that'd probably be the equivalent of maybe even a Google search today. Right. Mm -hmm. Back in the day. And and just going for it. I think that's just so inspiring for people to to I often say when people ask me, like, how do you strengthen your intuition? It's just like just start following it. Right. Mm -hmm. And the more like something happens and then you get that confirmation and confirmation and confirmation and then before you know it you're having that moment you're like okay guess I should pay attention to those visions when they come through right absolutely and you know I always like to say you know start off with um start off with the very very smallest dreams that come in um you know everybody gets dreams and if you basically have a dream of a a former co-worker that you've worked with three years ago you know I would if you had that co-worker's phone number I'd just say 
hey, just checking in, how have you been? I had a dream about you last night. If you don't want to say that, just say, hey, it's been three years, how have you been? And follow that dream, um, pay attention to that um, because it's like a muscle. And once you start off with the very small ones, then that muscle grows and grows and grows and that's how you trust your intuition and that's how the intuition grows. And how did you, how did you go from that to mediumship and deciding that you wanted to like formally you know, help sure. communicate sure. with your loved ones? You know, when I graduated from USC, um, I started working at Paramount Pictures in Hollywood and um, I was on set there and when we would um, be on break, you know, sometimes 15, 20, 25 minute breaks, um, I would be talking to different people and I would say, oh, you know, off to the left shoulder, your mom's side of the family, there's this one woman coming through. And, and then all of a sudden the woman just starts crying, you know, and then um, sometimes it was like with a, one of the male producers, I'm like, oh, this, this, this guy, I just keep on seeing behind you, you know, he shot himself in the head and then he just starts crying. He goes, that's my brother. He did this three months ago. Um, and I felt that it was a little bit inappropriate for me to basically give these messages at a workplace because then, you know, they're crying, they're emotional and they have to go back to work. So um, at that time, that was when I was 28 years of age, 27 years of age, I took that leap and I left Paramount and I started doing sittings full time. Wow. Mm -hmm. And when you're in a sitting, do you have any ritual that you do to prepare? Yeah. For mm -hmm. yeah. So when the client comes in, um, they sit down and um, usually when they're walking in, I'm like, oh, where did you have to drive in from? And I'm kind of curious because I always like where people live. And, and when people call in, I said, oh, where are you calling in from? You know, which city and state or which country? Sometimes I'll hear like just yesterday, I heard, you know, Zurich. Switzerland I'm like oh my god I've been there before I love it and that's all I'll say um so it's just making them feel a little bit more comfortable but also I'm just kind of curious because I love people and I love places and I love travel um so they sit down and and I said okay we're going to do a two minute guided meditation um and and with your eyes closed if you want to keep them open you can after that I'm going to explain briefly how this works and how I work as a medium since all mediums work differently and then after that, we're going to continue. And then I'll say to them, you know, um, you've asked to have this recorded. Do I have your permission to continue or to start recording? And they said, oh, yes, of course. And I says, okay, Ashley, my assistant, will get this out to you in the next three days. I proceed with the sitting. I don't allow them to really speak up because um, what happens, Cassandra, is and I've seen this multiple times when a client gives too much information. What happens is two things. Number one the medium can go off that information, which is fraud. Um, number two, when the client gives too much information, um, then those in spirit side, they get lazy. Um, and what, they're, what I mean by they get lazy, it's like, oh, well, my daughter's doing all the talking. I don't need to explain that I had breast cancer and I was 67 years of age and I lived in Milwaukee. She just basically said this, so I'll just you know, step back. And so if you as a sitter can just sit there and be open, receptive, and, and not really say anything, um, that's the best thing. Um, I always tell clients, you know, at the end of the sitting, any questions that come up, anything that you want to ask, we have time for that. So then it's a basically an honest, fresh, fresh uh, sitting. And how does that, um, how do, how do spirits appear for you? I was reading recently, I just finished uh, Laura Lynn Jackson's, one of her books, The Light Between Us. And she was talking about how she kind of has this like little grid of different lights. And then I read other, like every medium kind of has their own way mm -hmm. of experiencing that. So how does that exactly. experience feel look? And you're you? absolutely right. You know, how I work is that when I do my work, when I look off to your left shoulder, that shows me that that person will appear on your mom's side of the family. When they appear on the right shoulder, um, that appears on their father's side. When they stand directly behind you, um, that shows me that would either be in the category of husband or wife, um, brother or sister, son or daughter, or friend or cousin when they stand behind you. Now, there's other mediums that they'll say, what? No, on the left shoulder, it's the father side, you know? And I'm like, no, that's not how I work, you know? Yeah. So everybody works differently. And there's not really any wrong way or right way to do it. It's just however you can access the information. And what what have you felt like after all these sittings and all these experiences, even before your official sittings, all these experiences interacting with spirits, how has it shifted your view of death? 
of death. I'm not afraid of it. I know that we're here to learn certain lessons. And when I see so many horrible things, as we all do going on in the world, um, such as uh, a child that's born with Down syndrome, um, a person who suffers from um, clinical depression, um, a person who is going through different lessons of addiction. Um, I step back and I first and, fo first and foremost, I, I realize that, that God does not make mistakes. Now, I'm not a religious person. You know, I, I grew up Catholic, but, you know, I don't consider myself Catholic anymore. Um, and I haven't for, gosh, over 25 years. Um, I call myself and consider myself a spiritual person, but I say God, I'm old fashioned. You can say spirit, you can say the universe, uh, you can say divine mother. It's all the same, but I say God, I'm telling you, God does not make mistakes. So that person that is born with Down syndrome, you know, that person chose to go in to that body. Same thing with the person with the, has, has addiction issues or a person who suffers from clinical depression. Um, cause there's different lessons that are, that, that that person needs to learn and looking on a, on a, on a bigger scale, how this works when we, you and I, and everybody else on the planet, when we are in soul form, you know, um, we're standing next to our spirit guide in soul form and that spirit guide says, okay, it looks like you want to uh, incarnate into, into that body right there, that little baby, it's going to be born. Um, if you want to do that, um, that's going to be your mother. And this is what type of challenges you're going to have. You're going to have a brother like this, or you're going to have a grandfather like this. You, you could have a, a stepfather who's going to abuse you, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and these are strong lessons that you're going to go through to learn. Are you okay with that? And that spirit guide says, are you okay with that? In a very loving way. And I tell my clients that spirit guide is kind of like the best concierge service. It's a, it's a Ritz Carlton. You know? <laughs> but it doesn't matter what you say, you know, they're working for you. And if you say, nope, I take it back. Okay. I'll be right back. You know, it's There's another uh, option. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So the reason why, you know, you, you and I and everybody else are on the planet is because we have, a, we have agreed to be here. Um, when the umbilical cord is cut on that child, that child now forgets what it signed on to do. So what that means is technically you and I and everybody else on the planet are walking around aimlessly wondering what else do we sign on to do, you know? <laughs> Um, if you look at, um, you know, sometimes people who are multimillionaires when they're 20, you know, or 25, because they come up with some, some app. And then by the time they're 45, they're on the streets homeless. Okay. Well, maybe that that person had to learn humility or had to learn forgiveness for, for someone who stole their money or whatever it may be. Um, sometimes you see the reverse of it. You know, sometimes a person starts off really with hard, hard beginnings um, and you see a lot of um, uh, celebrities who start off with really, really hard, you know, abusive beginnings, but they turn out to be some of the most amazing, talented healers on the planet because they've been able to go through that humility, um, that pain. So again, whatever I would say to your listening audience, whatever you're going through, I would always say, God, show me the good, you know, and if you don't want to say God, you can say spirit, but keep on saying, God, show me the good. Show me the good. What's the good? What's the good? What am I supposed to learn with this? And if you keep on saying that over and over again, you will see eventually, or you'll feel, or you or you will hear, hear um, what's the good and what you're supposed to be learning from that. Yeah, I love that you said it. It's so funny. Just yesterday, I was having a client session. Uh, one of my clients is a musician, and um, we were talking about that trajectory, about how certain musicians or celebrities or whatever pop off so young right? Like when they're like 15, 16, right? And I was like, I'm convinced it has to be soul contracts, mm -hmm. right? Because there's nothing, I don't know, there's nothing individually more special about some people than others. Mm -hmm. But certain times, certain people are just kind of in different positions, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. For that. Mm -hmm. And so where in that journey would you say um, is like free will, is spiritual kind of healing and learning does that take part on on your trajectory or do you do you well, feel like there's kind of like a constellation of like events we kind of have to hit in our life it's all of it it's very individualistic from one person to the next so it's not a cookie cutter um it's very individualistic from one person next so let's talk about music and musician and you talk about this person who is 13 to 15 years of age and they come out with you know a, a rock band and and they become you know very very famous 
you know, um, it's, it's multi lessons there. It could be that that person was predestined to, to do that, to, to bring a lot of people together for healing with that music. It could be that that person in previous lives was a musician. So they've had previous, previous talents that they've carried over. That could be it. And it's a combination. Um, you know, it could be something about having that success and then losing it and learning the humility. So it's very individualistic from, from person to person. It's never one cookie cutter way for everybody. Yeah. And do you, how do you feel about, and I'm sure this is also paid into a lot of your medium um, sessions. Do you feel that death is a predetermined? Is that part of the things that you kind of select when you're going into a body of like the kind of way you're going to pass or when you're going to pass? Yes and no. Um, I look at it as going down like a hallway in high school and it's like one of those long hallways and you know there's different doors different classrooms that you can you know poke your head into and I look at those as for for a lot of people not everybody but I look at that as um, potential exit points you know so um, you know for me you know going back um, when I was in my early 20s um, I could have been in a plane that actually um, crashed and everybody died on board, but I was supposed to be on that plane. So I look at that as I was supposed to go, you know, maybe down that path and I wanted to, but spirit closed the door and says, nope, not this door, keep on going down the hallway. But yeah, some of it's predestined, some of it's not. I know that we're all here to learn certain lessons. I've seen most, mo uh, many of my clients who lost children um, sometimes I'll say you know this was a complete accident they were not supposed to pass um, other times I'll say you know this was predestined but again it's from sitting to sitting and sometimes at the end of a sitting when a parent has lost a child or or even a sibling or someone that they really had that connection with sometimes I'll say you know was it an accident was it free will was this predestined and sometimes I'll just have to say I don't know you know one thing about me with my clients is I'm very transparent. If I hear it, see it, feel it, I, I, I say it, whether it's potty mouth words or, or not, um, I, I say it. And um, if I don't hear it or see it or feel it, I don't bring it through. Now, at the very end of, the, of a sitting, when a person sees me, um, I'll say, do you have any questions? And sometimes that person will say, um, yeah, I, I'm so glad that these people <clears throat> have come through, but do you see, <clears throat> and I stop them right now, and I says, don't tell me if there's anybody else that did not show up, because if you ever come back to me again, let's see if that person comes through. And sometimes that will, they'll blurt that out. Like this just happened um, yesterday. You know, a woman came through, and, um, and this is actually her second sitting um, that she had with me. And at the very end, she felt very comfortable to say, well, do you see my father? And she blurted that out. I'm like, don't say anything more because if you ever come back for a third sitting, let's see if he comes through with validation. Don't tell me his age or what he passed from. Always remember the less the medium knows, the better. Mm. Um, so kind of going, back, that, that's so interesting. Um, I have two questions off of that. So I guess I'll go with that. And then I want to ask you one about, we talked about like kind of past lives and, and reincarnation and stuff like that. You touched on briefly with the musician, but with, uh, with that, do you believe, let's say someone was coming to sit with you, that woman that was like, Oh, did you see my father? Right. Could she have perhaps like heading into that meeting or maybe the night before or whatever been like, dad, I really like you to come through. Can you please come through? Is there like a way to do that that yeah. you recommend your clients do? Yeah, I always tell my clients, send out loving and mental thoughts to those in spirit side that you want to come through. Now, even with that being said, what if that client has said, but I really, really asked my dad to come in and I'll say, you know, in a sitting at times, you might not get, you know, who you want, such as your father, but you will always get what you need. And I've seen multiple times where that <laughs> father has not come in but the grandfather who physically abused that client comes in and says, I'm sorry, and takes up a good 10, 12, 15 minutes. Um, so that father will inadvertently step back to say, okay, you're going to come in and she doesn't want to hear from you, obviously, yeah. but, um, but she's going to step back and you're going you're gonna to say your apologies to her so you can move on. And I see that multiple times in, in, in sessions. Wow. Um, that's beautiful. And, uh, okay, so my other question would be, 
And maybe this has to do with the, what well, you were saying when you have sittings with people who have children that pass at a young age, um, or I don't even know if, you ever, if you've ever done that for a woman who's like miscarried or had a stillborn. Yeah. yeah, you know, I have a client that came in, um, this is probably about maybe six, seven years ago, and she sat down, we started the sitting, and I was looking at her lap, and then she was kind of a brazen woman, and she just basically said, well, why are you looking at my lap? You know, and I said, well, to be honest with you, I'm seeing two children right here. I said, they're not miscarriages. They're not stillborns. They're two abortions. And I'm just trying to you know, figure that out um, and making sure that it's an abortion, not a stillborn. And she basically just broke down crying. Like she, she went from brazen to crying within five seconds. And she goes, you know, I have three sons. Um, they're triplets. They're now, you know, 14 years of age. And when I was pregnant, um, with IVF, I got pregnant with five and I just knew that I just wasn't able to handle five kids. So I aborted two. So that came through. And so, um, when that came through, I said to her, well, the, the message is, is these, these two children are, were hugging you and saying, it's okay for not letting us in. We love you. And that really transformed that woman's life. Um, matter of fact, I just saw her, her recently and she's, <laughs> she's referred a lot of people to me just because, um, of my brutal honesty. And do you believe or have experience um, with souls like that? Do you think souls, I've seen this, I think you talked about this once on your Instagram about like kind of soul families or spirit families. Soul groups. Soul groups, that's it. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel like a child like that? Let's say they were, let's say someone has a miscarriage, right? Do you believe that that soul could try to get in for another pregnancy? Or... Absolutely. Yeah, it, it could. Um, very much so. Um, it could have missed the opportunity. It might come in through not through that woman's um, um, body. Now it might come through one of her three of the three triplets that might be one of their children down the road. It mm -hmm. could come through. Um, you know, or it could be now it could be now her niece, you know, her sister could be pregnant and having a child and um, and might be pregnant with with twins and they'll go to that person um, and then again as I mentioned before sometimes that soul might have already missed the opportunity and says okay I can't incarnate and have that experience in this lifetime okay so this might be a pretty trippy question but <laughs> as you can probably already tell my mind goes like all the places um, I've been thinking about this around reincarnation as well as communicating with lost loved ones right so for instance, you're communicating with a lost loved one that's passed on in your lifetime, in your adult life, right? Mm -hmm. Is it possible with that, if that soul incarnates again while you're still alive, mm -hmm. would you not be able to communicate with them? Correct. So I always tell clients at the very end of the sitting, um, you know, when a person comes through, that means that they have not reincarnated because what will come up um, sometimes a person says, you know, I've, um, I've asked another person to be here today or asked, you know, my, my, my husband to be here, or whatever it may be. Sometimes I'll blurt out like something of, you know, of honesty. I'm like, no, no, don't tell me anymore. Sometimes I'll be a little bit vague. Hey, I invited a couple more people. Um, did you, did you see them? And I said, no, I didn't. But just because I did not see them does not mean that they were not here. They could be stepping back, you know, allowing others to come through. It could be totally my fault. I might be not um, be hearing them. You know, um, they might be, you know, yell red and, and, and blue in their face, yelling at me saying, let me in. And I just, I'm just not seeing them. Or thirdly, that person could have already reincarnated, you know, and, and I've learned that lesson going back about 18 years ago. Um, actually, it's been more like about 20 years ago now. Um, and uh, one of my clients, um, he's Caucasian. And at that time he, I think, cause he just turned 80. So now he 20 years ago. So this is going back to when he was 60 years of age, he was saying me, he sat down. And even at that time he was very Caucasian. He looked like Colonel Sanders, but a 6.3, a 6.63 six <laughs> version of it. The really white hair, um, you know, white, white skin. And, um, you know, his mother came through and then the second sitting, he had a couple months later, his mother came through again. To be honest with you, he in the in the course of a year and a half, he saw me seven times. <laughs> and on the seventh sitting, I'm looking be above him. I'm seeing his mother come through, and I'm looking above him, and I'm just kind of like scrunching my eyes. And I said, I said, he he said, why are you scrunching your eyes? Why are you looking up above me? And I said, well, 
there's this African-American woman here coming through, shaking her index finger at me, calling me an asshole for not bringing her in these previous sittings. And I says, I've never heard anybody call me an asshole before. And that man, he dropped two tears. They, they, they didn't go down off of his chin, but they came down right to the midsection of his face. And he said, that's my fiance. I've been waiting for her to come in. So what he was doing is he was coming back each time, not so much to connect with his mother, he was coming back to see if his fiance would show up. Now, he was a very skeptical person at that time. He found that later he's an attorney. Um, and, um, and so he just wanted to see if it was real. Um, but at the very end of that sitting, he goes, oh, by the way, whenever she calls somebody an asshole, it means she likes them. So don't worry about that. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What a be well, I mean, what a beautiful story, totally, of someone also that was really like, okay, I'm not gonna not gonna give it away. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna give it away. I'm Which just is perfect waiting. because then it gives the validation. And as I said, sometimes when a um, person gives it away or gives a little bit of information, the medium can unfortunately go off of that. You know, I just had a client us uh, about two days ago, three days ago, it was Monday, so yeah, it's about three days ago, two days ago, um, uh, a client that that came in. And I was doing this phone sitting um, with him. And by the way, phone sittings um, are just as accurate as in person, as long as you don't have any barking dogs or car alarms going off or, or people walking in. And as long as you can have complete silence, it works fine. Plus, if you can sit, you know, wherever you're going to have that sitting for a good 10 minutes and just, you know, chill, just meditate. But in any event, um, when he... Uh, when he, when he called, I can tell he's an older man. And I um, started doing the sitting. I was talking, talking, talking. And all of a sudden I stopped because I was looking at this woman behind him. I'm like, okay, why am I seeing this woman? And he kind of blurted out, not that he was rude, but I think he was just a little bit impatient. And he goes, I can't hear you. And I said, no, no, I'm not saying anything right now. I'm just, I'm just seeing this woman behind you. And um, I said, I want to make sure I'm seeing the right woman here and he goes well just say it and I said well that's Marilyn Monroe and he goes I was with her the day before she was murdered so <laughs> yeah. so the thing is is that found out later um is um you know he um he worked on in Hollywood he was on West Side Story and all these different musicals um and he actually worked with Marilyn Monroe and you know, um, and I'll tell you the reason why she came through was basically to say thank you for being such a good friend to her. Um, and what it also came through is, you know, at that time, um, you know, she was a sex symbol and, you know, people looked at her as a sex symbol and people, you know, wanted to have sex with her, obviously. Um, but the client was a homosexual, a gay man, and, um, and, and she knew that, and of course, it was, it was, it was open to, to them. So, you know, she knew that she could trust him. She knew that he wasn't after her body, and that was a sense of healing for her, and that was her way of coming through and saying, thank you for being a friend. Wow, that is just and also it's probably just like huge for you to be like, don't second guess it, right? Yeah. Like, oh my God. <laughs> and I would even tell some of your clients who, you know, um, are not mediums or not are not in the spiritual field or spiritual realm. Always trust your intuition. You know, um, sometimes as, as, a, as a mother, you might have a feeling like I shouldn't drive the children to school today. I should walk them, you know, trust that because you don't know what what's ahead, you know. Um, as crazy as it sounds, um, where a person says, well, the bus comes every day. Um, you know, I don't know why I won't trust it. So I think it should be fine. And all of a sudden, maybe the child comes back with the flu, you know, because someone else is on the, on the, on the bus sick. Or it could be a bus accident or, you know, you name it. But if you trust an intuition, it will always be um, in line. That's the perfect navigation for you. And how would you recommend someone that, let's say, comes, sits with you or doesn't, or either way, wants to connect with a loved one that's passed over? Because the thing that I feel is really cool or validating and healing about mediums is that you have this kind of other person, right? Like I've been channel journaling 
and kind of asking for signs and, and, and doing that. But there is still this element of kind of like you were saying at the beginning of your journey, there's a little voice in the back of your head that's like, am I crazy? Or mm -hmm. for me, there's also that element of, do I just really want this to be true so much? Right? Mm -hmm. Is there any kind of- Yeah, that's, 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 a, that's the lesson of discernment you know, making sure that you're discerning the correct information. And the only way, the main way, the only way that you're able to learn discernment is by meditation. And, you know, um, I always tell clients, you know, prayer, which is great, Catholic prayer, Buddhist prayer, Jewish prayer, Muslim prayer, doesn't matter, prayer. You know, um, prayer is talking to God. You know, um, meditation is listening to God. You know, um, if you want to just eliminate God and say spirit, okay, you know, talking to mom who's passed over, or talking to grandma who's passed over is talking, talking, talking. But meditation is listening to grandmother and see what she's saying. And that's the best way that you, you would be able to, to do it. You know, um, before I start my day, I meditate every single day. There will be times, um, you know, between sessions, I'll sit down just for two minutes and I'll meditate just to clear my mind. And I've seen over the years that when I, during my offer up my lunch, because I, you know, don't really leave the office. I just bring my lunch in. It's only 15 minutes, but still I have another 35, 40 minutes to kill. And I'll just sit there and meditate. When I do that, instead of looking at Instagram or anything else, um, you know, the next sittings after that are just so sharp. So I, I really do see the effects of it. It's just the discipline of meditating. Nobody wants to meditate, including myself, you know, but <laughs> I know that, um, that you have to do it. Absolutely. You know, I'll, be the, first, I'll be the first to admit that I don't want to meditate. Um, <laughs> you know, and I'm human just like anybody else. I always tell clients, you know, I'm a medium, but I'm not a saint. So I'm <laughs> just like anybody else. You know, that chatter in my mind is saying, okay, you're wasting time. You know, you have to pick up your dry cleaning. You got to walk the dog. <laughs> you got to do this. And if you can, you know, shut up that chatter and just basically tell that chatter to zip it and just sit there for, you know, 15, 20 minutes, that's the best thing. Oh, I'm a huge advocate for meditation as well. So I'm glad that you said that because I think I, I see that in my, my, with my clients too, with the work that we do, everyone wants to skip over meditation. No one wants to, everyone's like, do I have to? And I'm like, actually, yeah, that's where all the juice happens. That's where, mm -hmm. you know, it's really interesting because I was doing some mantra meditations. Um, mm -hmm. And then recently though, at, like recently I've been getting, guided to just sit in silence um and to not even have that that chatter going on and that's been a whole different experience as mm -hmm. well especially as in the receiving and then it really just just comes through kind of what you were saying discernment and ultimately mm -hmm. trusting sure. right trusting what you receive what helped me out years back um and this might help some of your viewing audience is, um, you know, I would be saying, okay, God, you know, I'm really too busy to meditate for you right now, but I'm going to sit down and I'm going to do this for you. And I can just see spirit, the universe is like laughing their ass off and saying, oh yeah, you're doing it for us. No, 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 you do it for yourself, but you're just blaming it on us. And that helped me get through it because I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to do this for you. And, I, and that really worked. Um, so I call it guilty. It's called guilting God. Um, and um, that worked for me until I realized, okay, that's pretty stupid calling you guilting God because the effects of it is amazing. Right? But well, whatever gets it done, right? Whatever it takes yeah. to get you going. So mm -hmm. with the, I, I love that you said like prayer is asking and meditation is receiving the answer. So along the lines of asking, I was curious what your thoughts on, do you believe that our loved ones in spirit form are kind of consistently there watching over us or do we need to kind of call them in and say hey that's a great question you know i've seen in multiple case studies throughout the years is that whenever we you and i whenever we live our lives and i'm not a coffee drinker but let's just say you know people who are you know starbucks is a um is a is a pretty big thing to a lot of people and um you know i always tell people that go to starbucks or have that energy to go to starbucks i say you know when you are going there and you get all excited um those on spirit side can feel that excitement they can at times but when you have that sip of that coffee and then you get like that 
zing and you know you just say oh my god today's my mom's birthday happy birthday mom you know um on spirit or gosh happy happy birthday husband or whatever um will they feel it absolutely now the opposite is true if you're kind of like going about your day and having what i call a pms day which stands for poor me syndrome you know and you put this pms on your head poor me syndrome and you're going around moping um, for maybe a valid reason, maybe a valid reason is today's the anniversary of your son's passing. You know, it could be a valid reason is, you know, you just lost your job, you know, um, or you could just woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Um, those on the spirit side at times can feel that. However, when you're in that mode and you start talking to them and you start saying, I miss you, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera, they feel that. And that pulls their energy down. When your when your energy's up, it lifts their energy up. But when you're when you're sad, low, and depressed, and you think of them, um, it de definitely pulls their energy down. So the the moral of the story is is that when you think of them, make sure that you think of them with good energy and good thoughts, and also keep your energy up. Yeah. And do you feel like they, when they're in spirit form, are they? I don't know if this is maybe not the best adjectives for saying it. But do you feel part of the reason they try to come through and like comfort us so much is because they don't like they don't want to be seeing us that way? Um, it's 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 again, it's a very individualistic question. And that's a great question. But it's also very individualistic. Sometimes a person will, you know, consistently be around um, because they want to apologize for the hurts that they caused or the abuse that they caused. And they and they're constantly around that person. That person's having constant dreams of them. They're having sightings. They wake up in the morning, they smell their cologne or their perfume in the home. Um, and it's so strong. And then they finally come to me like, okay, I'm here because I keep on getting all these signs. What's going on? And the reason why is because that person with spirit was trying to get information across. But always remember that they are not always with us. Just as much as you and I have things to do here, they have things to do on spirit side. And many times people say, well, what things do they have to do? Well, anything of service, you know, welcoming children coming over, welcoming pets coming over. Um, there's things of opportunity, such as growth, such as, you know, what they call the halls of knowledge, where you can just open up a book and, and, and read it within like a huge, huge book. You absorb it really, you don't really read it, you know, all within a few, few minutes, you know, where it would take you couple weeks or at least you know for me three weeks to read a big book you absorb that all within a few moments um so that's so they're on their um, own journey still exactly, depending on what they need to do mm -hmm. but as long as they have not reincarnated they're always reachable and so forgive me if this is a completely ridiculous out of line question but i just I'm curious because I heard it, I heard it somewhere. I can't even remember where right now because I've been reading and listening so much to stuff. But can you ask your deceased loved ones or your, your spirit world connections to assist you in something? Like for instance, Absolutely. let's say you're wanting to get a promotion at work or mm -hmm. you're looking even, I don't know, maybe you're looking for a partner or mm -hmm getting I don't know like random stuff like that yeah so that's a great great question it's not stupid at all so multiple times throughout the years you know uh, a, a person will come in and they'll talk about the new job that the client just was working and I'm like oh you've been working at this new job as vice president for a year and a half and they said yes I have um and I said oh I said your father got that job for you and then of course I've seen this at times where they will cry and they'll say, you know, I was really up against 12 other people. And I asked my dad, can you, can you help me with this? Um, and she got that job. So the answer to your question, yes. However, I think a better statement would be, be, be mentioned here. And that is, if you want to call in spirits, let's just say your dad um, and say, hey, dad, thank you so much for this vice president position that's coming up. Thank you so much for helping me get it or anything else that you think is better for me. Mm. You're following it up with something better in the most perfect divine way. Because if you do that, you know, you're not limiting yourself. I mean, you might want that vice president position and you, you might be saying, dad, dad, I really want that job. I really want that job. But your father on spirit side might be saying, you know, that job is nothing compared to the one that's coming available here in three yeah. months. 
So if you follow it up, I say, thank you for this job or something better in the most perfect divine way, then it's in spirit's hands in the most perfect divine way. And your loved ones, when they cross over, have that, that perspective. So they don't have the human limitations, perhaps. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. It's all by thought. So those who have passed over, you know, they'll send their thoughts to us through dreams, through, through sensations. Sometimes we, we smell, we hear, um, that that's them sending that through by thought. But, you know, whenever you want to communicate with them, always remember that you never ever need to go to a medium to talk to them because you can communicate with them on your own. The most important thing is the intention behind it. So for example, let's just say it's your mom's birthday today um, who passed and you just basically wake up and you stretch in your bed and you're going like this and you're like, Oh, happy birthday, mom. Like that. Now, will your mother, well, in this case, will, will her mother hear that? Yes. However, if you basically put on a little birthday party, you know, and you bring over your children and your husband and you go to, let's just say the Olive Garden and you're sitting down and, and, um, and uh, you put an extra place setting there and the waiter says, oh, um, should I take this away? Is anybody else coming? No, it's for my mother. Um, today's her birthday. And then of course the waiter might come back and 10 minutes later, I'm like, oh, did your mother not show up? Oh no, no, she's dead, but she's here in spirit. <laughs> here. Um, right. <laughs> Um, and if you do that, the intention is so strong, that person on the spirit side will totally feel that. Oh, oh mm. that's so beautiful. That's so beautiful. And such a good reminder to keep mm -hmm. honoring. I mean, there's, there's crazy things that have come out in sittings for me over the years that I just, you know, um, have to, I'm, I'm just very honest. And, and if I see it, feel it, taste it, or hear it, I'll say it, whether it's, it's positive or, or, or negative. And the reason why I do that, Cassandra, is I always tell clients, yes, you're the one paying me to, to do the work, but I don't work for you. I work for spirit. And right now your grandfather, or right now your brother is my, my boss. And I have to make sure that they use my vocal box in the things that they want to say. So I allow spirit to use my vocal box to bring through the things they want to say. And that's, that's my job. But I remember this is going back probably had to be about 21 years ago. It's actually 22 years ago at my first office in Torrance. Um, and um, uh, at that time, I, you know, I opened the, the door of the office. There's this little small dingy, dingy uh, office. And this woman came in, she's all nicely dressed up and she's probably in her maybe mid sixties um, looking. And uh, so she came in, she had her sitting and in her sitting, her father came through and, um, and he basically said that, please give love to my son, my other, my son and my other daughter. And the woman says, well, my brother lives in New York, but I don't have a sister. It's just my brother and myself. So in any event, throughout the course of sitting, I said that multiple times. I said that like about five times and, and she got frustrated in the sitting um, because she thought that I was just crazy. And uh, so I basically, when she was writing the check um, there before she left, um, I kept on hearing her father come through and say, again, again, please get my attention across to my son, my daughter. And as she's walking out, I just said, oh, make sure that you give the attention and love to your brother and sister. She looked at me and then she slammed the door, you know, and then she drove off in her Jaguar and she drove up to Palos Verdes where she, she lived. And how I remember the story is because about three weeks later, I picked up the phone. That's when I was answering the calls myself. And I said, hello. And she goes, she goes, I saw you three weeks ago. She goes, I'm so-and-so. And I'm like, I, I didn't say this out loud, but I said, I, I was thinking, oh yeah, I remember you. Um, but I said, oh yes, I remember you. How, how can I help you? And she said, you know, um, I went home and I called my brother in New York and told him the crap that you were telling me. And my brother told me, that well it's about time that you know and my client said about know what and um the, the 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 brother said well you know back in 1943 when dad was stationed in germany um he got another woman pregnant and we have a half sister out there um and um and she goes and why wasn't i ever told and the brother said well we thought that you're too young and how i remember the story is she said 
to me. She goes, I told my brother, I am 67 fucking years of age. Is it not time now? You know, uh, and how I remember that story is because she, she said those words. I mean, those words that came out of her mouth, which I would not have expected from that type of a, a woman, but she, she said it. Um, and so anyways, um, uh, that woman has referred hundreds of people to me over the years because of just the, the accuracy that, that came out of that. But again, you know, on my end, you know, I thought I was losing it. On my end, I'm like, gosh, I'm hearing this, but I have to say it. Um, I'm really glad that she called back um, because it really made me feel good. Like, okay, Tim, you're you're not losing it. You know, sometimes um, I'll have clients that will come back four or five, sometimes 10 years later, and they'll say, you know, after that session, when I basically denied half the things you were saying, they all made sense to my mother when I played the recording, but that's a whole 10 years later. And I'm like, I felt, well, I wish you would have told me that, you know, in in real- I, you know, um, but that's in my, in my earlier years when I needed that confirmation. Now I don't need the confirmation. But yeah, it just goes to show you that sometimes things are not, uh, yeah, sometimes a loved one is just communicating with whoever happens to be the one that got to the medium. Exactly. I, I think, of how I think more of us are able to kind of talk to our loved ones, right? Whether it's out loud or in our heads. And do you think it matters if it's out loud or in our heads while I'm saying it? No, as long as the intention is pure. So if it's, if it's verbally, like I said, mom, happy birthday, that's a verbal, um, or just a, a mental, she'll hear it. But if you put a lot of intention in it, verbal or mental, they will really hear it. Always remember it's the intention behind it. How they how they will hear it the strongest yeah and so i imagine they probably hear us a lot more than they're able to get through to us that's so- not only here but they feel um huh. so it's more of like if, if we're low as i said we're sad you know times that person spirit side will be distracted by that like okay what's going on you know it's kind of like if you and i were both you know preschool teachers you know, um, and we're basically in, uh, on recess and all the kids are playing on the jungle gyms and, you know, everybody's laughing, 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 but you have a little Johnny on the side, just kind of pouting. Um, it's like, we'll be distracted. It's like, I th- excuse me, Cassandra, I think I need to go over and see if that boy's okay. You know, um, however, if that boy is, is, is crying, then we, we definitely leave our communication and, and, and talk. And that's the same thing about those on spirit side when we're low yeah they can feel it when we are upset they surround us and even when it's positive like even if you and i were the school teachers being on spirit side and you heard you know little susie just screaming and but we looked but she's going down the slide and she's having a blast I'm like oh okay she's she's having fun you know and we kind of go back to our our being on spirit side if that makes sense yeah oh oh my gosh this is so great uh, thank you for answering. I feel like I have one, I'm not trying to look, I wrote all my questions down so I didn't forget anything. Um, I guess, what should I do? Mm, um, okay, I have two questions. I'm trying to decide which one's better. But I guess my thought would be, other than meditation for someone, and maybe maybe there is nothing other than meditation, but um, you obviously were born with a gift right? And you have a very special ability that I'm sure on like on some levels, we all have some degree of maybe less enhanced. What do you think about that? Is there something we can do to be able to just better? Yeah, great question. Yeah, all mediums like myself are psychic, but not all psychics are mediums. Um, Each and every one of us, we um, encompass a certain gift, you know, for mine, it's mediumship. Um, It's not direction. I mean, um, I live over here in Laguna Niguel, and still to this day, after living here for 12 years, I still don't know the difference between Aliso Creek and Aliso Parkway. Um, and it's been 12 years; it's just someone right down the street from where I live. And I'm like, I, I don't, I don't understand that, but I understand mediumship. That's my gift, you know. Where you have a person who listens to directions and they don't need to write it down and they memorize it, or a person who's good with numbers, or a person who's good with accounting, which is numbers, or a person who's an attorney or a school teacher, um, a, a mother, a homemaker, who's uh, um, showing total unconditional patience for those children, which I wouldn't have. Um, you know, if, if I was a school teacher, I think I'd be fired on the first day. I would just not be able to handle it. Um, but these other school teachers, they have the patience where I necessarily don't. So everybody has their own 
their own gifts. And it's just about, you know, how we use those gifts. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, so, so exciting. Um, this has just been so fantastic. Thank you for answering. Oh yeah, sure. If you want to have me come back on um, in the future, um, let me know if you want to um, have some of your viewing audience um, write in certain questions that they want specifically answered. We can do that in another podcast if you wish. My pleasure. I would love that. Is there any parting final statement or thing you'd like to share with the viewers? just be happy you know um keep the energy up you know we're on this on this planet right now in a very exciting time um and make the most of it and be as happy as possible yay thank you so much tim this has been fantastic yeah. you're welcome you're welcome okay and everybody Thanks. that's listening i'm gonna put all of tim's information below so that you can check him out i highly recommend following him on instagram watching his amazing videos you can book a reading with him if you like or just google him and we're gonna put a link to your book Oh, um, wonderful. Thank you. Check out yeah. your book. You want to just give us a sentence or two about what's the premise of the book? Sure. It's Life and Death. And um, I got um, three New York Times bestselling authors who endorse the book. Um, and that book is now in six countries. Um, and basically, the book is about my journey as a medium, starting out to where I'm at. Um, it's also really good for healing grief. Um, you know, I, it took me 10 years to write that book. And a lot of people are telling me even 10 years earlier, Hey, Tim, write a book. It'll get you on TV. I'm like, that's really the wrong intention to do a book. Hey, Tim, write a book. It'll get you on radio shows. I'm like, that's really the wrong intention to write a book. I'm going to write it when I, when I, when I want to write it. And I'm glad I did that Cassandra, because what I did is for all those 10 years, I kept on like regurgitating it in my mind. Then I put it down and What's the joy about the book is you can give it to really anybody and that person at the very, very least will say, yeah, it was an okay book or yeah, that was a good book. Um, and the reason why I say that is because I grew up with very strict Catholic parents. Um, so I understand religions. I understand people's skepticism. Um, and I've had different rabbis. I've had different people from, from the Mormon church, LDS, who have read the book and they said, yeah, it was really good or yeah, it was good or it was okay, but they didn't say it was bad. And so there's that healing there. And, um, and that was my intention about writing the book all along. And that's really beautiful. That, thanks for sharing that, because I think that's definitely been something, um, even like right now, dealing when a lot of my clients have moved through grief this year as well, and myself unexpectedly as well. And we have like our parents' generation is not quite as like we're like my listeners are going to be so stoked for this conversation, right? I know my clients are like going to be very, and you know, we're like in it. We believe it. We're there, right? Mm -hmm. And the a lot of times our relatives and the people that we love are dealing with grief, and it hurts even more because I think, I think of how much grief hurts when we have all this spiritual knowledge, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, um, saying, absolutely. And the reason I was saying it's a very exciting time. And this is like, if you want to look at the big, big, big picture here, you know, up until 2011, for the, the previous 2,500 years, it was, you know, our, our universe, our planet was ruled by the age of Pisces, you know. So for the last 2,500 years, up until 2011, it's organized religion, it's government, it's communism, it's all these different things that are very structured, what keeps people in their place. And then 2011 hit and then it shifted. Now we're in the age of Aquarius for the next 3000 years. And for the age of Aquarius, just like the thought, the song, thought creates reality. Thoughts are things. So when you have that thought, it manifests. When you have that ex uh, experience, it manifests. You know, it's everything's moving in a very, very fast space uh, with, with, with multimedia. And, you know, before with the organized religion and government, they were able to really kind of put a lid on a lot of the corruption. Now, one person just does a, a, a video and it's throughout the whole world and it's a spotlight now. So it's a really exciting time. I, I, I think where we're, where we're living right now um, is, is really special because people's crap are being, you know, seen and, and, and that's a good thing. Absolutely. And I think we're learning more about how all the different dimensions and all the different possibilities than ever. I think, yeah, our souls picked an awesome time to come down. And, <laughs> and I'm so grateful to be alive during this time, too, where this can just be, like, these kind of conversations can happen. Sure. And 
shared and they can be on YouTube and people all over the world can, you know, similarly, people all over the world work with me, work with you, are able to, you know, have these people that are in their towns might be the only person in their town mm -hmm. that like believes this or is coming into That's this, so right? And then they yeah. get to be the butterfly that sends that ripple effect by being exposed to all of this. And it's just absolutely, it's incredible. absolutely. Yeah. Next, maybe next time you interview me, we can talk about pets and how they come through. Um, we can go into depth about that if we want to discuss that. Yes. Okay. Well, definitely, definitely. I can't wait to have you on again. I already okay. know. I'm okay. sure they're going to have more questions and you guys can come at me. If you're watching this on YouTube, just put it in the comments and I'll save them for next interview or shoot me DMs on Instagram and we'll also uh, save and them. tell your, your audience, don't be embarrassed about the questions. You know, I'm an open book. So, you know, I will always give the honest opinion um, and the statement on that. So if there's something that you want to ask and you think it's it's too personal about what, what things are happening on spirit side or X, Y, or Z, that's it, your question and, and, and I'll answer it for you. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. And I love that about you. And I hope that you guys also felt that for me kind of asking all the <laughs> crazy questions in my head about <laughs> things I've been mulling over. Just go for it. And and this has just been so enlightening. And yeah. I love your energy, Tim. And thank you for all of your wisdom and, and sharing all sure. the experiences. And I'm going to have to sitting with you because now I want to... <laughs> Okay. I'll come see you in person because we're so close. Okay, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. Anytime you wish. Yeah. Have a great day. Thanks so much for okay, being here. Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks. You too. Bye bye.